This project was designed to better understand the impact of semantic predictability on listener adaptation to non-native accented speech. Native and non-native are terms we use to describe whether someone is speaking their first language or a language they learned later in life. In any speech act, both the speaker and listener have important jobs in communication. So while non-native speech is shown to be more difficult for a native listener to understand than native speech, listeners can also do their part to help carry the communicative burden. In fact, studies have shown that listeners can improve their understanding of non-native speech through practicing. This is called adaptation to non-native accented speech. We know that things like the amount of time spent listening to non-native speech, how many speakers someone listens to, and the acoustic qualities of the non-native speech can impact a listener's adaptation. But what we don't know is how the content of the speech impacts adaptation. In this experiment, we are examining semantic predictability, which essentially means how likely a listener is to be able to guess the next word in a sentence. In high predictability sentences, it's very easy, like the stars come out at night. In low predictability sentences, it's more difficult, like mom talked about the pie. In semantically anomalous sentences, it's nearly impossible, like the black top ran the spring. We considered two potential outcomes. First, increased difficulty of the task could increase attentiveness, which would give an advantage to listeners trained in lower predictability sentences. Otherwise, higher predictability sentences could give listeners a way to map unfamiliar pronunciations and generalize this to other sentence types. For this experiment, I recorded a native Mandarin speaker saying these three types of sentences in English. In the training phase of the experiment, the participants, who were native English speakers, were split into high predictability, low predictability, and semantically anomalous training conditions. In each condition, participants listened to 40 sentences of one type and transcribed what they heard for each sentence played. In the testing phase, all participants heard the same set of sentences consisting of all three types and again transcribed what they heard. At the end of the experiment, participants were asked to fill out a language experience survey. In the results section, there's a graph depicting the results for each type of test sentence, and each bar represents one of the three training conditions. As we would expect, when the training a participant received matched the test sentence type, these participants showed an advantage. For example, in the first graph, participants who trained on low predictability sentences were most accurate in transcribing low predictability sentences in the test. This indicates that people should train on the types of semantic context they expect to hear. However, when the type of training a participant received did not match the test sentence type, no training condition showed a significant advantage over the others. For example, with the same low predictability post-test sentences, participants in the semantically anomalous training condition and participants in the high predictability training condition showed about equal transcription accuracy. This means training is not more generalizable for any one condition. As a future direction to gain a better understanding of how trained listeners compare to untrained listeners, we are currently running participants where they only take the test portion of the task. This will give us more insight into the ways in which semantic predictability influences adaptation to non-native speech. Thank you for listening. Special thanks to the Office of Vice President for Research and Innovation and to the Center for Undergraduate Research and Engagement.